So today we're very happy to be at LAM with Guillermo Quitka, who is visiting us. We've made it in this time of pandemics. And uh, this is a time to share the view of the exhibition and to share with you also some thoughts and uh, talking about your painting more specifically. This is not a retrospective, this is more of a survey of your work, but you have different periods of time because it starts with the early 80s with some drawings and up to really recent works that you've done during lockdown. You know, what you did and what we tried to make in this, in this show is, is it's a completely different way to approach my work. It's, it's with key pieces, key pieces that talk to each other and somehow they, they also can trace a path through maybe a, a much, much longer period of time, almost 40 years. But here I think we were very free in order to, to capture similar subjects, but in a longer period of time. So that's what this show is, I guess. I think the public was surprised and seduced at the same time, because for the people who were very uh, I would say, knowledgeable about contemporary art. They might know you because of the beds, because of also the plans, the, the maps. And, and then they sort of lost a bit track of you, as you were like saying a little bit, because of the Cartier, you had like a very substantial body of work. The beds are like iconic in your work. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the private and the public because this piece is really at the crossroad of the public space and the private space. Yeah, sure, of course we, we could think on, on beds in so many ways. The, the, it could be the space of, of dream, of sex, of life and death. I mean, there could be a place of, of so, so many uh, human center actions, almost like the, 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 the human conditions happen on a bed, probably. So we are probably as humans as, no, as probably the bed made us humans in a way. It is a place and, and as a place, I, I, I just took the idea that, that this is a place as also the map is a place. It's simply a matter of scale. It's, of course, it, it is the public and the private, and it is the encounter of the two, but it's also, you know, two territories. I like to, to think about the bed and, and, uh, as a territory. And also, the, in the many ways that the, 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 the beds are depicted in my paintings, which in many ways there are, I, I, I also like the, the fact that the, the geometry of a bed, it's such a simple structure, it's a rectangle with little marks, and by doing that you embody so much. And maybe it's the way I like to think about my work, that there is a certain economy in the way that you achieve maybe a very vast subject. In the first room, um, and I think it was obviously intentional what we brought together to assemble this body of work you've painted during lockdown. Yeah. For a visitor who will be doing the exhibition back and forth, it will really understand the many directions that your work is taking. The plans, the floor plans, the, the beds, at the empty space, the mirror, the double, uh, the corners, the chairs. So, I mean, you basically your vocabulary and how you bring these words to bring uh, each time a new type of sentence, like bringing a new type of language, reassembling, disassembling, recreating, I would say with some common obsession that you will see.
one of the many images that is striking is that in the beginning, in the shelf, you have this landscape and you have this open plan, obviously, of an apartment or, or a room. And because we've been all through lockdown being like prevented from getting out and you have this inner space in which we've been confined and then having this outer space, maybe the space that we were acknowledging and dreaming to recover to some. So, I mean, there are like many aspects that are kind of subtle in, in your work. And I think for the public, it was also a big surprise to discover your drawings and to realize sometimes that your drawing are preceding some intuition that you would translate later into paintings. I think I, I draw and some of the, most of the works on paper are somehow the, the painting that I dismantled in, in drawing. So, so in a way they, they are studies, but not because they proceed, but, but at the opposite, because I try to understand what I did and therefore the drawing is such a great tool to me to dismantle what I've done on the painting. So in a way, I usually say that the paintings normally are before my drawings and then the drawings are in a way of afterthoughts of what I paint. Of course, as for many artists, drawings is, is such a, an amazing uh, tool to, to understand, to reflect, to communicate, I mean, for so, so many things. Sometimes, of course, I, I made a study, but usually I I undo what I've done through the drawing. One of the striking aspects of your work is how creative you are with technique. You're always like using paintings, but never exactly the way we expect painting is. So I think it's a very interesting way to see how you twist, you push, you push things to the limits. I mean, always very gently, but always very creatively. And I think for like many artists that have seen your shows, that was like a big surprise and big stimulation for them. I think in a, for a visitor, it's very emotional. I mean, obviously in your mind, you have many, many different stories. And for me, they're like piece of fiction that have been frozen. Okay. At least that's <laughs> one of the way I see it. And, and you don't really quite know what has happened before, as in the cinema, if you do stop on an image, yeah. you look at something and then you ask yourself, what has happened? Yeah. What is about to happen? What would I do? And so you have this all mechanic and you're looking at it and then it's, it's a wonderful way to place, I would say, the viewer in sort of a private eye. You look at all the details to try to understand why this bed is yellow, okay. what has happened. So, I mean, then you start like building stories. And I think for the visitor, it's a, it's a really jiggle puzzle, but it's a very stimulating visit. But I think before we enter the show, there is this very significant painting, the yellow painting. In this show, we have decided not to exhibit any diary. It's not a, a diary, but you've made it over a course of 10 years. So you have many layers and when you approach, you look at it, you see like some drawings, drawing a hand, yeah. putting a word, using graphite, then doing different layers. So you've been like building paintings with drawings in that process, specifically in this one. But that painting in particular, as, as you said, it, 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 it has all these overlapping actions, things that we do when we have a pencil in our hands or, or, or sometimes things that we do when we don't know what we, what we are doing. Mm -hmm. or, and, and also uh, because that, that painting also has a very elaborate structure of, of, uh, of architectural plans. I don't know, normally I work with, with, home, with house plans, but that one is a little bit more maybe labyrinthic. I really don't know uh, what type of, of architectural plan is that. 
And I also start to think at that time if I could conceive a way that uh, how the pictorial space occupied the canvas and in a way by, by creating these architectural spaces I was given some kind of structure to, to paint. Uh, you know, I think we were paint all the painters were trying to, to reinvent ourselves in, 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 in a very critical mass that the painting is. I, I don't give it for granted that you just could paint without really thinking more critically. I think the public was also often surprised like looking at this yellow painting or looking at your cubistoid paintings at how intricate you know things are like you have like one layers but then you have another layers of signification and then many people have like brought uh, Borges obviously like this sort of labyrinth you you quite not know exactly you think you know but then you don't know and I think it's also one of the big attraction of your painting, especially here in Europe and especially probably in France. People think, oh, okay, this is the new Cubist painting, but you affirmed, and I completely agree with you, it has nothing to do with this. Obviously, painting has a memory, and I think your paintings are about memory and many different layers of memory. And as an artist, obviously, you've seen, digested, registered things but it's it's not a quotation it's it's completely different but so it's it's inviting the public and especially the european audience to go beyond this way of looking at space and i think one of the quality of your painting it's really talking about many different type of spaces and um, and it's surprising many people because your painting is very unique and it's been very strong, very different from what we see often in Europe. And uh, I must say, at the museum, we've been very glad to have well, you here. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. But, um, you know, just to reflect what you were saying, uh, you know, sometimes I'm, even if I understand how labyrinthical or ambiguous a work can, can be, I don't want to give up the idea that there is an encounter with an image that is direct. So I wanted to be as direct as possible, even if there is a recognition of layering. But I, I still want that the painting is, is one specific thing. Yeah, and um, so I, I think it's, um, it's solely supports by, you know, by overlapping one mm -hmm. thing on top to the other. So I still think that the, you know, the, the moment when I, 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 I face the canvas and I paint is, is quite direct. As you know, I'm happy with the show and, and uh, the selections and, and also the fact that through this incredible, you know, years that we had, we, you know, made it possible. So, <laughs> and, uh, and seeing the works here made a, a really uh, um, a very emotional trip. Yeah.